and welcome to another WatchGeek video. Today I'll be doing a review and a partial tutorial of the Casio PRW2500. Now I say partial because I'm just going to cover the basic timekeeping uh, functions while the advanced ProTrack functions that include the sensors I'm going to save for another video because putting them all together would just make too long of a video. So anyways, this is a bit of a bat blast from the past, as they like to call it, because this is an older generation ProTrack that, although still in production, it's been replaced with the newer generations like the PRG270 that I did a review of earlier, if you want to check that out. And this watch was the flagship of the previous generation, if we ignore the titanium version and different uh, limited editions, and was arguably the most feature-packed watch of its era. Its self-charging, self-adjusting comes with the full ABC package, altimeter, barometer, compass, and comes with the full range of Casio timekeeping tech, meaning a world-time function with 31 time zones and 48 cities, 5 alarms, a 24-hour stopwatch, a countdown timer that, although it's only a 60 minute one, comes with the yachting timer, which is not something found often. And then, on top of all that, you get the moon phase and a tide graph function. So this watch is basically a digital equivalent of the Patek Philippe Super Complication. And it all comes in a really robust case that can really take a beating. Which is why ProTrack watches are considered to be some of the toughest ABC watches out there. Now this is further, uh, further confirmed with the water resistance rating of 200 meters. Uh, while usually ABC watches like Suntos are, uh, are rated to only 30 meters. Now a friend of mine recently asked me what the difference is in toughness between this and a G-Shock. And honestly, I believe this thing can take whatever a G-Shock can. And the only difference is that after let's say 10 years of wear, you can replace the protection bezel on a G-Shock to make it look like new. While on this, it's the case that's taking all the beating. So any scratches you get are gonna stay there. When it comes to the specs, this thing is massive. It has a diameter of 50.6 and a lug to lug of 56.3. The, the, the thickness is 15 millimeters and it comes in at a very light 80 grams. Now I say very light when you consider all the functions that they managed to squeeze into this case. But despite its size, this watch really wears well and very comfortable even on my 6.7 inch wrist. Now that's partly thanks to these, uh, these strap wings which close the gap between the strap and the case on a smaller wrist and it's partly down to this really soft and, and pliable rubber strap which is a lot better than many G-Shock straps I handled. And it's one of the telltale signs that this was once considered a flagship model. Now the watch comes with a mineral crystal that's somewhat protected with this compass bezel and the bezel is bi-directional and has no clicks which is pretty standard for a compass bezel. I especially love this silver ring around it which is made of metal and it's all brushed. It's really a nice detail. Now the buttons are large and easy to press although they do require a bit of getting used to because the back of the case as you can see extends past the buttons to prevent accidental presses as you move your wrist around and although it works it means that when you press your buttons you have to do it at an angle because if you go straight like this especially when the watch is on your wrist your fingers get caught on the back of the case so you can't press them all the way. Also the adjust button is not in its usual position but it's at the front of the case next to the light button and in its place there's a huge sensor sticking out. Now this being an older generation of ProTrack means that it comes with the V2 sensors which are slightly slower and have a bit of a lower resolution compared to the V3 of the newest generation. So let's say for example the altimeter can read in increments of 5 meters only while on the V3 version it can go down to 1 meter which still impresses me even today. Also the compass on this is gonna run for 20 seconds and then shut down while on the new version it can run for a full minute. And on this it's slightly slower when it needs to detect a change in direction compared to the new ones. Also the new sensors spend supposedly up to 95% less energy than these. So when it comes to the sensors the new generation is better, there's no arguing there. However, in my own opinion that's the only field where the new generation is better. In everything else this watch is better than the new generation. First the duplex LCD, so on the, on the new generation if you want to read the compass data you have to use these small dots or, or, or squares on the outer edge of the screen and these are tiny and sometimes hard to see especially in a negative version like the one I reviewed and that is also used to, to measure the difference in barometric pressure on this scale and also the altitude gain or loss. 
Now on this version, the older one, thanks to the duplex LCD, which is basically just another LCD on top of the main one, reading all this data is easy, legible, as you can see, and it really looks awesome because it's colored. So it gives off a feeling of luxury compared to the new generation where everything is pretty plain. I don't know why Casio decided to ditch this tech on the new generation. I mean, I know why they did it, but it's kind of pointless. They did it to save, uh, to reduce the energy consumption on the new generation. However, if you already employed, if, if they already employed sensors that spend 95% less energy, and they also used an LED backlight, which spends a lot less energy than this, and this has the full, I mean, this has the, the EL backlight, they could have at least left the duplex LCD tech, despite it being power hungry. And to be honest, I've never heard of these watches having problems keeping their charge, even with all these power hungry features. So in my opinion, Casio was solving a problem that doesn't exist and in doing so kind of ruined the new generation. I mean, at least when it comes to the screen and the backlight, because like I said, this watch uses a proper backlight where everything is evenly, evenly lit and it's also not too bright. Well, on the new generation, they use the super illuminator LED light, meaning that you get hot spots where the LEDs are located and on some models, they're just too bright. So waking up in the middle of the night and checking the time is just gonna blind you, at least in my experience. Then there's the sheer amount of data that's displayed on the main screen. Now on the new generation, you have to choose whether you want the date and month or day of the week or barometric data. On this, no, there's no either or on this. This just gives you everything. So you have the time, you have the, the date, you have the month, you have the day of the week, you have the barometric data, you have the moon age, and you have a tide graph. It's just, everything is there just when you look down on your wrist. Now, I'm not saying that this is an essential feature. However, it brings out this childhood geekiness out of me because I remember growing up and looking at catalog pictures of watches, I would try to figure out what functions they have just by looking at the screen and wishing for a watch that has a million functions that are all cluttered in one display. Well, this is basically it. This is like my childhood fantasy coming to life. And that's the reason why I love this watch so much because it kind of brings, a kid, it brings out the kid in me while still being a serious piece of kit. So when it comes to the screen and the legibility, this thing just wipes the floor with the new generation. Then another thing where this thing is better is because they used standard lugs and these screw in pins to hold the strap, meaning that you can put this watch on a NATO strap, on a paracord, on any strap you want. Hell, you could even put it on a leather strap if you want. While the new, new generation has integrated lugs and straps, meaning that you can only use the factory strap and nothing else. So this watch is a true example that sometimes going forward is not the best way to go. And honestly, if I had to choose between this and the new generation, I would be pretty much torn apart because everything I like is better on this, on this version. But the new sensors are really sick. I mean, I've been playing with the Mudmasters and Golfmasters and Rangemen, and those sensors are amazing. Now, if Casio released this again, but upgraded with the new, with the new sensors, but everything else left like this, I would buy that watch no matter how much it costs. I wouldn't even ask for the price. That's how good it would be. Anyways, this completes the review part. And now we're going to move to the tutorial. And like I said, it's going to be the first part of the tutorial. And then in the following week, I'll make the second part and I'll put a link right here when that is available. Okay, so the first mode is the home screen mode. And like I said, this watch pretty much gives you everything here. So you have the, the hours, the minutes, the seconds, the date, the month, the day of the week, the barometric data, the moon phase indicator, and the tide graph indicator. Now, there is a certain thing that you can toggle by pressing the adjust button, and that's between the tide graph and the full calendar that displays the year as well. So here, if you press this button, now you won't be able to see the tide graph, but you will be able to see the full calendar. Now, someone might argue, but you said you get to see everything on this watch. Well, honestly, if you need a watch to tell you what year it is, then not having a tide graph is the least of your problems. So I always keep the watch like this to display the tide graph and it looks cooler. Anyways, pressing the light button in this mode is going to activate the light like I showed you and pressing and holding it for more than three seconds is going to activate the auto EL function. 
and there's going to be a little indicator that just light up here like auto this means auto EL. so this watch when you put a level and tilt it to your face it's going to activate the uh, backlight automatically since this is a solar watch once you activate it it's going to stay on indefinitely while on regular battery operated uh, casio watches this thing is going to turn itself off after six hours now because of the solar cell it knows when it's in the dark and when it's not this is why I didn't activate when I did it right now however if we turn off the light and do the same thing there as you can see the watch is gonna light up because it detected it's in the dark to turn this thing off you do the same so you press and hold the light button for more than three seconds until the icon disappears there now while you're in the home screen pressing any of these buttons is going to take you to the sensor functions but we're going to cover that when in the in the other video pressing the mode button is going to take you through different modes of the watch and no matter what mode you're in pressing and holding the mode button is going to return you back to the home screen now to adjust anything in the home screen you press and hold the adjust button for more than three seconds and once the watch enters the adjusting mode with the mode button you're gonna go through different values and you adjust those values with these two buttons going upwards and uh, up and down and also if you have something to toggle on or off you do it just with the lower button so the first thing that the watch asks you is what your home home city time zone is and this is important to select correctly not only because the world time function is directly connected to this so if you mess it up the world time function is going to show incorrect times but also the watch is going to tune in its receiver to the correct tower depending on the time zone you you select because there are six towers in the world that this watch gets the data from okay so you you can move uh, east or west with these two buttons once you select the desired time zone you press the mode button and move on so the next thing that the watch asks is the dst or daylight savings time now this is a summer time and it can be at auto meaning that if you're within the range of the of the towers and your time zone uses the dst you can leave it like this and the watch is automatically going to switch between summertime and winter time you can also toggle it to off and this is when you live outside of the tower coverage so you can manually turn it on or off or if you live within the tower coverage but your time zone doesn't observe the daylight savings time meaning that you don't have the summer time so you put it to off so that the watch doesn't reset uh, the time each night okay pressing it again you can go to on and toggle back to auto so you just cycle through since I live within the coverage and we do have the DST I'm just gonna leave it at auto pressing the mode again now asks you whether you want the 24 or 12 hour display having the 20 uh, 12 hour display means that you're gonna have the AM and PM indicator and you toggle with the lower button and having a 24 hour you're gonna have the military time pressing the mode again moves to the seconds and if you reset the seconds now after 30 seconds the seconds are going to reset and the, the minutes are just went one up from 18 to 19 however if you reset the seconds and again with the lower button before 30 seconds or up to 29 the seconds are going to reset but the minutes are going to stay the same so if we reset it now there as you can see the seconds reset but the minute the minutes stayed the same pressing the mode again you move to the hours and now with the hours you can go up or down and you can also speed scroll meaning that if you press and hold the button the watch is going to start speed scrolling until you release now the minutes so again up and down and speed scrolling then the year you can again go up or down then the month and then the date and the day is calculated automatically now pressing the mode button again takes you to the beep or mute function so when the watch displays beep that means that it's going to beep when you press any of the buttons if you toggle it with the lower button to mute you're going to have this little indicator here the musical note that's been crossed out and now when you press the buttons the watch is not going to make any sounds okay moving on the next one is the illumination duration so if it's at LT3 when you press the light button or tilt the watch the watch uh, the backlight is going to stay on for three seconds and you can toggle it to LT1 meaning that it's going to stay on for one and a half seconds I like to keep it as long as possible so LT3 okay moving on now this is the power save function if this thing is on the watch is going to turn the screen off 
between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. until the next morning or until you expose it to light. Also, if you leave the watch stored in a dark place for more than six, uh, six days, the watch is going to shut down everything. So the receiving and everything with this function on, and the only thing that's going to be going on is the internal timekeeping. And when with this thing turned on, the watch can be stored in the dark for about two years. While with this turned off and you toggle it with the lower button, it can be stored for up to five months until it, uh, it, re it uses the battery completely. However, I would advise you not to store this watch in, in, dark, in, a, in a complete darkness for long periods of time as that will damage the battery. Also, I forgot to mention that this here is the battery level, so low, medium, and high. And when you turn on the power save on, you will have this PS here next to the battery level. Now, you want to keep the battery at medium or high because then all the functions of the watch work. If you drop the battery to low, it's going to shut down the sensor functions and the automatic time reception. And if, you, if it goes to charge, which is even lower than low, that means that it has only a couple of days left on the battery, it's going to shut down all functions except timekeeping. And it won't be able to do anything when you press the buttons. It's just going to display the, the time. Uh, and that, that means that you really have to charge your watch right away. Pressing the mode button. Uh, tells you asks you to select the the units for measurement and you don't you don't have to go full imperial or full the other way you can choose each one individually now to change the temperature unit you press the the upper com button so you can go from celsius uh, centigrade to fahrenheit now uh, these two uh, other two are connected to the buttons so the pressure is bar borrow so you can change this pressure unit by pressing this button here as you can see and the meters are connected to the altimeter so pressing the alt is going to change these between feet and meters and once you selected the units that's it pressing the mode button cycles you back to the beginning of the setting and now if you missed anything or you want to change something you just press the button the mode button until you reach what you want to set again once you've set everything up and you're satisfied you press the adjust button to exit the adjusting mode and now you're back to home screen. Now pressing the mode is going to go to the next functions and we're going to skip the tide and the record screen function because they're directly connected to the sensor functions that I'm going to cover in, in the other video. So we'll move on to the alarm. So the next function is the alarm and this watch comes with five alarms but they're all five daily al alarms. There isn't a snooze alarm on this watch. You cycle through these alarms with these two buttons. So we can go alarm one, two, three, four, five, and the last one is the hourly chime or SIG. Now to turn any of these on or off, you press this middle button, the borrow button, and there. Now you've turned on the alarm one. And as long as any of the alarms is turned on, you're going to have this little symbol here. Uh, and let's go, go to the hourly chime or the SIG. If you turn the SIG on or off, if you turn it on, you're going to have this little bell symbol here. And this means that the watch is going to beep for every full hour. And naturally, you can set up each and every alarm individually to the desired time. And you do it just like you set up the time. So you press and hold the adjust button there. And now you can move the hours uh, up or down. And pressing the mode button takes you to the minutes. Again, up or down once you select the desired time you press the adjust button also please note that as soon as you start adjusting the alarm it's going to automatically turn itself on so even though alarm 3 was turned off as soon as you adjust the time it goes to the on and then you can manually turn it on or off after that okay moving on the next function is the stopwatch and it's the standard split stopwatch by uh, like on 90% of other Casios. It goes up to 24 hours so you can start it with the lower button, stop it and reset it with the upper button. You can do the split times so you can start it. You press the upper button to freeze the screen so you can write down the data but the stopwatch keeps running in the background and pressing it again unfreezes the screen. And you can do the first and second place. So if you have two runners, when the first runs through the finish line, you press the upper button. When the second one goes through, you press the lower button. Now you write down, write down the time of the first runner and pressing the upper button takes you to the time of the second runner. Once you write that down, 
pressing this again will reset the stopwatch. So pretty simple. Okay, so the next function is the countdown timer. And like I said, this is a 60 minute countdown timer. And so to adjust it, you press and hold the adjust button. So you can set it up in one minute increments. You can't go to the to the seconds. So you can only set up the minutes. So let's say if we set up for, I don't know, 10 minutes. Like I said, this watch also has a yachting timer or it's, uh, I don't know how to explain it. It has a reset point that you can set up. So once you press a button, the timer is automatically gonna reset to that point. So let's say even though you set up the timer to 10 minutes or while you're in the adjusting mode, Pressing the mode button is going to ask you for the reset time. Now reset time can be set anywhere from 1 to 5 minutes. So let's say if we set it up for, I don't know, 2 minutes. And now you exit the adjusting mode. When you start the timer, when it reaches 0, it's going to start beeping. However, if you start the timer and uh, you want to reset back to the reset time, which is something used in yachting, I don't know how, you press the adjust button. Not like, like I said, you can now stop it you can reset it and start it again or while it's running pressing the reset button the upper button is automatically going to jump to the reset time that you set up in memory so pressing this jumps to two minutes right away and now you can restart it again another thing that this watch has is what's called a progress uh, beeper meaning that when you press this middle button you're gonna get this little symbol on the screen here and when the watch has this displayed in the timer mode it means that uh, when it gets down to 10 minutes it's gonna start beeping for each minute that passes down all the way to the last minute and then when in the last minute it's gonna beep from 10 seconds uh, f for each second down to five seconds and then in a different tone from five seconds to zero so it's a pretty cool feature because you can like I said observe and you can hear when you're getting close to, to, to zero and you turn it off with this button so we can stop it and reset it uh, the next function is the world time function and uh, it, like I said, it has 31 time zones and 48 cities and you move through the time zones with these two buttons so you can go east or west and you can select any time zone you want and turn the DST for that time zone manually on or off by pressing and holding the adjust button like this except for the UTC because UTC doesn't have the DST and that's pretty much it and the last screen is the receive screen which tells you when was the last uh, successful reception on this watch so as you can see it was on uh, first of October at 4.03 a.m. Also in this screen you can initiate a manual reception by pressing and holding the lower button and once the watch enters the manual reception this receiving indicator here is going to start blinking and when the watch catches the signal it's going to display L1, 2 or 3 depending on the strength of the signal. Now this adjusting can take up to, up to 10 minutes and during the day if you live at the edge of reception like I do it's probably not going to be successful. However, in the night, it should sync without any problems. Uh, now, please note that this receiving indicator is also going to be visible uh, in the main screen, in the main screen, as long as the last night's reception was successful. So, in a way, this watch tells you by having this displayed in the main screen, it tells you that it it guarantees that it's accurate down to the second. And if there's no RC indicator, it means that either this, the last night's, uh, last night's uh, sync was unsuccessful or you manually change the time or date, um, time or time zone. Anyways, to cancel this manual reception, you just press the lower button and there. And one more thing that you can do in the RC screen is turn on or off the automatic reception. So if you live outside of the tower coverage or if you travel to, a, uh, to somewhere in the world where there is no reception, you can turn on the automatic reception to save the battery because the watch is going to keep trying all uh, the whole night to receive the signal. And if you know there's no chance for it to receive it, you just turn it off. So to turn it off, you press and hold the adjust button and the watch is going to ask you on and you toggle with the lower button or off. Now if it's at off, like I said, the automatic reception is going to be turned off. Since I do get the signal here, we'll just turn it on. And pressing the adjust exits back. And pressing the mode takes you back to the home screen. Anyways, this pretty much completes the review and the first part of the tutorial. 
So I hope you enjoyed and found it useful. If you did, please like and subscribe and stay tuned for the second part. And I'll put a link here when that video is uh, done uh, where I'll explain all the ProTrack functions, the ABC functions and the tide graph and everything else that the watch has. Anyways, again, thank you for watching and until the next video, bye.